Time to put on your thinking caps. I got a dungeon crawl with a psionic twist. Stick around, I'll tell you about it. Hiya, folks. Old Man Grognard here, and today we're going to be looking at a module from New Big Dragon Games called the Vault of the Faceless Giants. Now, this one is kind of an intro module uh, with a bit of a twist because it's primarily, it's for, it's for basic, um, as I see on the cover, for a first to third level characters for use with the BX or Labyrinth, LL, Labyrinth Lord, RBG editions, and old school adventures. You can use it with other editions too, and that's no problem, or other games for that matter. Um, but it was written as an adjunct and showing you how to use the uh, New Big Dragon Games Basic Psionics Handbook. But it can be used without it. It can be used without psionics, but it's kind of neat, you know, to have them in there for this. This was written by Richard J. LeBlanc Jr., of course. It's 32 pages. It was published in 2015. And I find it, it's got a really good, good uh, flavor to it. And I'll get a little bit in, more into that in a minute here. Um, it's... Uh, one of a trilogy, the other two have not come out yet. Uh, the other two are PA2, Spawn of Zamaltet, and PA3, The Janu Prophecy. Okay. And um, it does a really good job of really immersing the players into it. Uh, it's got kind of an Indian feel. Um, if, you've, if you take a look at the book and some of the illustrations, and even in the... Uh, the uh, the text and it kind of links it up to the the sound the way he was doing psionics in the psionics handbook uh, which is more of a chakra mystic thing uh, it recommends you should have at least one mystic in there although it also says you should have like you know magic users clerics and elves and stuff in there too um, because it's not just all psionics all the time um, but it, it does have a few twists in that direction um, I, I'll tell you about how to like, you know, probably fix it up without Sonics later. But the whole plot is, it's your basic, uh, you're going down river in this one land for various and sundry reasons. It starts in Meteor Ray, which means it start on the boat on the river. Um, the boat springs a leak, they have to go ashore. And the captain and the crew have the passengers go to this village that's about a half mile up to uh they said this is going to take a couple days to fix so they'll put you up and the chief does um but they've been having some trouble with a temple nearby now this temple was a temple to a deity called rob r-a-h-b pronounced rob and basically he was a um uh, masquerading as a deity he was more like some kind of demon from the abyss who basically buffaloed a lot of people to worship him a long time ago some hero came in cleaned the place out but they see activity in there again because this demon promises immortality and that's always a draw so they got another guy in there who came in from another area saying hey i can start this thing up again so he's got acolytes, things like that, people he's convinced, hey, you're going to live forever, and if they haven't convinced them, they charmed them. He's also got a little buddy, a uh, winged monkey deity type thing that works for Rob to help him do his dirty work. And so far, they've kidnapped a child, an infant from a mother in one of the, one of the women in the village. Uh, the chief doesn't really believe it. She believes that she left the child somewhere and forgot about it. Because she kind of said, I believe her. Can you guys go check it out? That's pretty much the premise. And what you have is a 52-room temple um, of this god. And it's got some really interesting conceits in it. Uh, it's got a lot of meditation rooms, each devoted to one of the chakras of the of the uh, of the temple of the the psionic disciplines, 
Um, they have worshipers in there already, but you're not going to run into a whole lot of them. And I love this conceit because most of them, they're in suspended animation. And there's a bell in the middle of the dungeon that the bad guy rings to wake everybody up. Now, the, he did this basically, the God let him do this, or they gave him the power to do this, or however he wanted to do it, to uh, basically it cuts down on maintenance. Like, he doesn't have to house them, he doesn't have to feed them. He can just leave them there, like this, you know, until they are needed. And here's what the book looks like. Here's some of the text. Here's the... Uh, Oh, there's some there's some uh, villagers there you can use. Got some rumors on the side here. Two, standard two column layout and beautiful, of course, because it's new big dragon games. This is what the temple looks like. This is a map of the temple that comes in the uh, it's in the folder, uh, like they used to do back in the day. You know, they the, they would pull out and there's the map. I'll show it to you in a minute. Um, you know, it's got all you know stats and everything. Got a couple new monsters in the back. I'll tell you about that in a minute. And uh, here's what the book looks like. There's a there's a copy of it. But like I said, here's the adventure right here, and here's the map. Beautiful map. It's hard to see here, but and the one on on, uh, on there is black and white because I got that off the PDF. But you have a color overlay on part of the map because it's bas basic blue. But it's got yellow, yellow, yellow areas, and that means those are the areas that are lit. Now, in the black and white one, the they have a gray areas which are not lit, so it works out the same way. So you can tell what's lit, what isn't, which is is handy dandy. I like that. Uh, it's got some things like uh, giant snake in here, uh, demon shrines. It's got some really neat traps and really dangerous traps too. Um, and you also talk to an old man in the village before you leave hopefully, that gives you a pearl of, I forget what they call it, but basically it fixed rips in the uh, planes of existence. And basically what has happened is there's a couple of rip planes here and there that he's been patching up around the village, but there's a great big one in the temple you got to fix because that's the rip to the level of the abyss where Rahab has his temple and you got to fix that before you leave. And it would be really nice if you find the kid, too. But the mon monkey boy, his little servant is, is running around somewhere, and so is that big priest that you know that, that's trying to, hey, come on down here and give us eternal life, blah, 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 blah. And basically all the demon wants to do is just get sacrificed so he can eat him. But that's the way demons go. Um, and that's what's presented before you. I like it because it has this real, it, like I said, it's kind of got an Indian slant, but it also has that Temple of Doom vibe to it. Where, you know, this big priest could be Molaram trying to raise a demon to become immortal. And, uh, it, and it, you know, it's got a lot of really good, good traps and tricks in there for a first level. And they will die if they don't pay attention. There's a couple of saver dies in there. So they will die if they're not paying attention and thinking about it. The psionic angle is um, tied up with chakras, as, I can, as I've told you before. There's a couple of things like um, they've got this slime in there. That oh, I'm sorry. It had, they have intelligent yellow mold. Basically, it's a yellow mold with enough intelligence to it to have psionic powers a, a psionic power or two and it can really mess them up they've also got a monster that's a slime that knows how to like fly and fling itself on you which is like <laughs> and there's these these mosquito like things that come from the abyss and that you see them at certain points in the temple it's funny uh they are called, and I'll show you what they look like here in a minute. They are called abyssal locusts, and they're basically six-foot locust-type creatures with human faces, which were basically evil people who 
the demons decided not to make into creatures to serve them and just make them in these little locusts. And what they'll do is they'll fly up and they'll sting and all this stuff. But if they got four, if they grab four legs on you, they will haul you up in the air and drag you to the nearest rip in the in the uh, dimension and take you there, take you to his temple so he can feast on you. So it's like, it's not only you're fighting this thing, if he grabs a hold of somebody, all of a sudden, it's if you're not near any kind of rip, it's a chase. You know, it's like, stop that thing. You know, I loved it. I love it. In fact, here's here's what they look like. Also, there's an there's the abyssal locusts, and there's the demon monkey. There's his little buddy right there. And it talks about the uh, slime, too. And like most, I'm not sure if it's all, but most of... Um, Richard LeBlanc stuff, you get pregens in the back. You get about 12 pregens, which is really nice. Um, I think more modules should do that. And it's it's just a very, like I said, this guy puts really good modules together. I can hardly wait for the other two. I mean, you know how I feel about psionics. I don't really like them, but I like his psionics. And I would be willing to use it with psionics with this thing. Now, taking the psionics out is like a no-brainer. Just turn everything into magical effects, things like that. Um, I didn't really see anything that really needs to, like, re you really need to tweak it to get it to work. But there's always that non-magical option with this. But I would try, if, you, if you're into the psionics handbook thing, I would try at least once with that. If you're not, take a look at the Psionics Handbook. You might like it. You might want to run just for this or the other two that are coming out, which I hope is soon, which I will review as soon as they come out. Now, where to get it? Okay. Drive through RPG and RPG Now. Um, they have the PDF for free. Now, if you'd like to throw a few bucks Richard's way, you can go to the new Big, Big Dragon Games website, which I will put down there, of course. Uh, the PDF is four ninety five, and the print version is nine ninety five. Very reasonable, and that includes an international. That's also nine ninety five, um, you know, plus shipping, whatever. But that's um, that's pretty much what you're going to like, and that's reasonably priced. I, I like that. This is this is this is to me the typical the typical OSR, the standard. Now I'm not to say typical because it's really good. The standard OSR module nowadays to me. A real the the standard good one so you know try it out it's really nice um, so and if you have anything you want to talk to me about or talk to me about you can either like comment here down there or oldmangrognard at gmail.com and so that is the uh, vault of the faceless giants take it run it load it and I will see you folks next time, okay? So until then, bye-bye.